We are Honey Tracks. We do also game analytics, and uh, we have uh, our own approach. And um, I will talk a little bit about it, and especially also um, very much uh, like a cookbook, a little bit how to do that, and over a game, um, how the game metrics and the analytics evolves, and how uh, because it doesn't stay the same. And um, we're a German company from Munich, and um, we will, yeah. And now let's get started. And there's typically always the never-ending quest for the most important five metrics. I'm hearing that quite often and say, hey, which are the five most important ones? And from time to time, you can read about them even in the web. And some people say, hey, there are three, there are the seven, or, but actually, it's indeed a never-ending quest. Why? Because there's nothing like there are five metrics, or seven, or eight, or ten, whatever. And if you focus on them, you're on the safe side. No, because games are unique and different. And of course, you know, they have a life cycle. So you want to generate actionable insights. You want to make a difference for your users, increase the, uh, their experience. And of course, what works for a casual game and a, so a social game or a mobile game will probably not work for a browser game, something like that. And so as well, you know, as a game has a life cycle, as plenty or most of the other, yeah, as any kind of technology uh, as well, you also have to focus where is my game right now in their life cycle. Because at a different stage, you have to focus on different metrics. And I will talk about today especially about that. So, here is a typical life cycle of any industry, of uh, any product, and this is taken from Crossing the Chasm, which is all, uh, basically already 20 years old. And uh, of course, you have the early innovators, and when you start with the game, um, you get them very early in the game, they give you valuable feedback. But then, of course, you know, the, the critical stage, if you want to grow, is can you reach the early adopters um, that uh, they really come into your game and that you reach somehow like this critical mass that you will also reach, of course, the early majority. So, and then if, you've, um, if you come over this kind of gap here, this is chasm, then of course you are most likely to have a successful game. And that's uh, actually what is really important about it. So, um, Let's get started. I mean, we are only a few here, but typically, if you could choose, you would, could have like double the virality or half the churn rate. Who would go for double the virality? Just give me some hands. Okay, one. Oh, thank you very much. And who would go for half the churn rate? Okay, two, three. Okay. Yeah, three are the winners. Why? Because if you look at that, a quite simple model that we have here, a little bit simplified. We have two assumptions, like the, the black line shows you like you have double the, the, the virality, and the orange one, uh, you see that it has less, uh, less uh, uh, invitees, but like a much better churn rate, which is of course like the opposite or the complement to the retention rate, churn and retention. Churn plus retention uh, equals 100%. Okay, so if you have like a very, very good uh, virality in your game, then you will reach a very quickly very high number of users. But if there is a pretty bad retention and or a high churn rate, they will churn out very, very, very quickly, and there will be basically no game. And if you don't have a game, so there is nothing like what you could monetize or what you could reach, make, make money out of it. So if you have no retention, you have no sustainable growth, and of course, you know, um, as said, as the users tend to monetize later on in the game, uh, it's, uh, it's important to keep them in the game for a very, very long time, because then you will have the chance to monetize them. So, but what does that mean? No, so, so before I get into that about retention, so here's then like the, uh, the, the, the big map, something like that. You have the game life cycle. And of course, then we suggest you from our experience and our customers, so first to focus on the retention. Focus on engagement metrics first in the early stage. Then add, and that's a critical point, add. Do not forget about retention later on, but add user acquisition and virality metrics uh, on top uh, to that. So then 
And finally, of course, then focus on monetization, focus on how to make it so good and that you get the most money out of it, that it's a really profitable game, or that it does make only fun to your players, but also, of course, to you, to your investor, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we will have a, well, that was the wrong one. Now we will have a closer look what it means from our perspective about retentions. What to start with. So you see here a number of uh, retention that you could focus on, like, uh, like the retention of the first or seven days. Then your first steps in a funnel, typically a tutorial or forget about a tutorial. Some people say, if it's a cool game, you even don't need a tutorial. Nevertheless, the first, I don't know, 30, 50 steps are really critical because most, very, very many players leave your game even before they have uh, made like 50 actions in your game. So if you can, if you can focus on that, if you can improve something there, it's, it will be a big, big difference. Then, of course, something like how many sessions do you have uh, per day? So how often do users play? Or how long do they play? How long are their sessions? And if you can improve anything there, it will be, of course, of, 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 of high, high value for your overall success uh, of your game. And then, of course, like the churn rate for the short and long term. So what is the user lifetime in total? And uh, that will be also very nice. But how do you do that? I mean, that's sad, but how do you measure that or how you can improve that? That's on the right-hand side. So optimize first, uh, first steps, tutorials. Do like A-B testing user funnels, because how do you do something? You have to make an assumption, you have to do it, and you have to test it and see how it works or that. No, make two examples, typical A-B-C-D testing. Do something, look what works best, do more of that, and stop what doesn't work. Next, then, of course, you know, um, Make it funner, of course. It's, it's all about you. The, the users are playing because they want to have fun. So everything what works for to them, what makes it funnier to them, okay, keeps them in the game. If it's serious, if it's boring, they, it does make sense to, to, to improve anything and, uh, until you will reach something for, for, for them. Okay. And stack as, uh, other thing, things as well, like track feature usage, what they do in the game, or uh, like the game mechanics, so that of course the gameplay is fun, that everything really works, and your assumption that you had when you started doing a game, and assuming you're not just making a simple copycat or something, but something like really good, creative, a new game, then try to check whether your assumptions really work. So very, very concretely, like, how would you do that? First, if you start uh, with a funnel analysis, because you start and you see you have like a very high churn rate of a daily churn rate of 50%, something like that. Besides, I've seen already so like churn rates of 90% and higher. But nevertheless, that's, that's, that's maybe, that I, that's not good enough. You want to have a lower one. So, Check the first steps and build like a funnel in your game. And if you have something like that, a huge drop even in the very early second, first, second, third steps like that, that's it's a clear indicator that your users are, that that's not of interest for them, it's not nice enough, it's not good enough designed, and then they're dropping off. And they're not, keep, uh, they're not kept in the game. Next one is, of course, make an assumption, improve that. Now you've figured out, okay, there's something I would love to improve. And then make like a p-test in very small steps and see it, does it improve with the original one or with the other version. And go up and, and try and, and work it. And you have to, to rework it, to redo it quite a lot of time. And be also ready for some kind of rebounds because maybe some ex uh, expectations of yours or assumptions will not work as you think. And then it might be uh, happen even that the return goes up. But then hopefully if you're good enough, if you have a great team, it will drop and then you will reach something like, uh, in this case, like 20%, and which is of course a very, very nice churn uh, rate. That's a very concrete example how to do that. Finally, next then, if you then move on to the next block and you now focus on the acquisition. Now you say you have a good game, it's it had a good, uh, a low churn rate, users are, stay, are staying in your game, it's fun. It's good, it's fun. Now get a lot of users in, because now you are sure you will not burn just money, because it's an easy thing, take one million, buy users at Google, at Facebook, and you will get them in, but how much, how long they will say, it's a very, very different story. But now the game is good enough, 
Go and get new users in. And then, of course, focus on the, all the CTR, CPC, and the marketing channel optimization, cohort analysis about the channels and the demographics that you're having and using. And that's, that's of course, in the next step. And um, because especially, you know, the monitor, opala here, <laughs> uh, when you're doing, like, A-B testing also, like, of different marketing channels, you know, or demographics, you will also see, okay, some things work for other, for some markets, some work for, for, for other markets, and you have to adjust that, how you address these kind of markets. Because basically, this is, of course, you know, one of the most important ones. If the prelayer lifetime value is lower than your acquisition costs, you're not making money, you're losing money, and that will work for a very short period of time. Great. And how, like, another very simple example to illustrate that now in, in with real data. So check your channel prof, uh, profitability. You start with channel one, and you see that these are, like, plenty of channels. And the last one is much, uh, not the last one, but channel uh, 32 is much smaller than the, in, in the activity, in the number of users you're getting than the first one. But if you compare that with the revenue, you will see that here it's, like, two and a half times higher, although you have much smaller number of users. So, of course, the thing would be then, of course, focus on this marketing channel 32, buy users there, buy with this partner, with this ads, and so on and so forth. And then even you could go one step further, and you could even improve something like that. Okay, why do I have like such a lower payout than the revenue? So is this, is this because the payment mechanism used there is maybe much more expensive, like SMS payments, or are there more, many, many, how do you call this, uh, paybacks, uh, that uh, there are like fraud or similar stuff? So you could work on that as well. Next, of course, then, if you then look like the virality, like inviting friends and this mechanism, which are very, very strong in the social and, and the social games, but more and more, of course, also oh, mobile games, browser games as well, these mechanics should be part of your game because people love to show off, hey, I reached something and I want you to know. So use that. And then you should focus on stuff like K-factors, you know, how many uh, invitations are really accepted by, uh, by those people who are sending them out or, you know, by the friends of those. Uh, how many numbers, uh, how, what are the numbers, what is the acceptance rate, and what percent is really then uh, virally acquired of your total users, of your, of your, of your growth rate. And how, you how can you do that? Or how would you like then to improve that or uh, to, to, to make actions out of that? I mean, first, include viral triggers in the game. I said that already. Next is, of course, you know, I mean, test that again, you know, make assumptions what, what type of message works for what users and uh, through emails, through some kind of status messages, whatever. You know, it decide, it, it's really dependent a lot on your game as well. And then, of course, also like acceptance mechanisms, also tests which works and so. But that's again, test or make an assumption, uh, test it, look what works, and then improve it. Keep improving it. Monetization, very important. I mean, basically, we're making games because we love them, but we also want to earn money with them. So, of course, something like the RPU, RPPU, and uh, the payment conversion rate. And Wales analysis, of course, very, very interesting. And something like player lifetime value, of course, what is the total value of your player that you would estimate, that you could estimate, so you would know, okay, that's like uh, somehow also the value of my game right now. And for that, you could also have concrete actions how to do that. I mean, really make like uh, alternatives to, uh, to improve your buyer conversion. How can I bring more players to convert earlier? That's, that's, that's a huge thing, of course. Next one is, of course, like uh, uh, lead them towards the first purchase. If you know that plenty of your players love or those who are have, have purchased something, purchase this or that or love to do this or that, lead the others also towards this action so that they will do a similar. Then, of course, tests again, like virtual goods. What works? What do people like? Maybe it's different, for instance, in different markets, so you should be able then to target different markets or other players you know, with the different goods, of course. 
And then something like, of course, like payment process and pricing also. I mean, what, how does your shop look like? You know, is it well prese presented? Are the payment options really good enough at this stage? And these are all very concrete actions that you could take if you would have something. And there's another very easy example. So start revenue by level. Here you see that you have a lot of revenues between level 20 and 30. But of course, um, you have a lot of, you know, the activity is quite low there, which means, you know, okay, there are only a few users who are making the revenue. So what's next? Very easy, look, how can I use these users who are in the early levels also to make revenues, to purchase things, to convert them earlier? So what could I offer them that they would like? So if I then have a look at uh, the very early levels in my game and what is purchased there, if I have the ability to track that, virtual goods by level, and then I see that food works pretty, pretty well in the very early levels, which means you know those users who are buying things first are better, much more interested in food than in crafting or something like that. So. Offer users food in the early levels, uh, give them maybe a very big discount or similar, because then you will reach uh, something, uh, you will have converted them, and then you, ca you will be able maybe also to sell them the more expensive goods later on. Because if you look just on the total number, you will see food doesn't look that interesting. It does, it just look like, mm, not, not really important. But if you have this also available, that you see, okay, that it's really purchased at early stages, you know, this is like a catalyzator. And therefore, make this analysis and you will improve your conversion rate. So, we've talked about that and you see that there are, a lot of, of course, like um, a part of the kind of standard uh, pillars here, um, something like, well, let's say, cost metrics. You need cost metrics to be able to do that because with the standards, RPU, what is my revenue, how many monthly active users dividing that, you will just get a very little knowledge. Maybe that's enough for your investors if, if, if the numbers are great, if not, even those will be not enough. Okay, but uh, for instance, if you want then to have very specific uh, improvements uh, in gameplay and in your monetization, of course you should focus on your biggest fans. And the fans are of course your whales, who play a lot, who pay a lot. And that's of course um, the best combination, of course. So you should have the, you should focus what are, who are they? And so, what is their profile maybe? Maybe I can see, find something, you know, that, they, um, that, that they have in common. And then of course, um, not only what payment uh, does she use in our example, but also what does she love to do? What kind of features of my games are she using? And because every game is unique, and the will game is different from a shooter game, of course, therefore you have to be flexible in custom metrics to be able to track down really at what stage, how did she involve and what did she really love to do so that you can use this information and improve your game and focus then of the wealth. Like, what she likes, to bring on a higher variety of the same type or increase the prices stepwise and see, hey, she likes and maybe she will, she's even, uh, it's okay for her to pay 50% more for, for more for the same for the same item. Um, and simply, what works? It's great. What doesn't work? Okay, forget it or remove it and be uh, free enough to say, okay, that doesn't work and get rid of it. And that's 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 really important too. So, I've come already to an end, and just very quickly to sum up. As we've seen that the games and uh, have their life cycle and you should focus on different metrics in their, in their, in their lifetime. So start with retention, keep your games, uh, your players in the game and that's basically the most difficult task that you have. Why? Because that's really hard to measure and that's really important to see what's working, what's not working and is the game fun or not. And if you're just thinking, mm, yeah, my game is fun but I just have to find, uh, uh, but the others don't understand, then you're not understanding the players or your, uh, yeah, your customers. So when your game is fun enough that your users are staying in the game at a good, good ratio, then of course continue and add more metrics like user acquisition, virality, and then of course monetization. Improve gameplay and improve all the steps, the marketing channels, where are you buying, to what price are you getting the users, is this really the good price for it, a fair one, and so on and so forth. Peel the online onion, derive actionable insights, of course, uh, with cohorts, with segmentations, all these kind of uh, techniques. And then 
it's important that you understand it's a continuous improvement. It's a process. It's not like something we can do for three months and then it's fine and then it's just enough, just print the money or collect the money. No, you have to do it. You have to, you have, it's a steady process. So you have to have the processes in place and you have the people who know what they do and how to do that, and of course. And I mean, that's so simple, but really focus on your players, on your customers, because you, they are who are, you know, what the game is for. And uh, if you do forget about them and just focus too much on metrics or just on design or so, it, will, it won't be a success. Okay, that's it. And I'm pretty much on time. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying with me. And uh, hopefully we will have now some good beers and snacks. And uh, yes, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Okay.